In computer science, a universal Turing machine is a Turing machine that can simulate an arbitrary Turing machine on arbitrary input. The universal machine essentially achieves this by reading both the description of the machine to be simulated as well as the input thereof from its own tape. Alan Turing introduced this machine in 1936-1937. This model is considered by some to be the origin of the stored program computer used by John von Neumann for the electronic computing instrument that now bears von Neumann's name the von Neumann architecture. It is also known as Universal Computing Machine, Universal Machine, Machine U. In terms of computational complexity, a multi-tape universal Turing machine need only be slower by logarithmic factor compared to the machines it simulates. Introduction. Every Turing machine computes a certain fixed partial computable function from the input strings over its alphabet. In that sense it behaves like a computer with a fixed program. However, we can encode the action table of any Turing machine in a string. Thus we can construct a Turing machine that expects on its tape a string describing an action table followed by a string describing the input tape, and computes the tape that the encoded Turing machine would have computed. Turing described such a construction in complete detail in his 1936 paper. It is possible to invent a single machine which can be used to compute any computable sequence. If this machine U is supplied with a tape on the beginning of which is written the SD standard description of an action table of some computing machine M, then U will compute the same sequence as M stored program computer. Davis makes a persuasive argument that Turing's conception of what is now known as the stored program computer of placing the action table, the instructions for the machine, in the same memory as the input data, strongly influenced John von Neumann's conception of the first American discrete symbol computer, the EDVAC. Davis quotes Time magazine to this effect, that everyone who taps at a keyboard is working on an incarnation of a Turing machine, and that John von Neumann built on the work of Alan Turing. Davis makes a case that Turing's automatic computing engine computer anticipated the notions of microprogramming and risk processes. Nuth cites Turing's work on the ACE computer as designing hardware to facilitate subroutine linkage. Davis also references this work as Turing's use of a hardware stack. As the Turing machine was encouraging the construction of computers, the UTM was encouraging the development of the fledgling computer sciences. An early, if not the very first, assembler was proposed by a young hotshot programmer for the EDVAC. Von Neumann's first serious program was to simply sort data efficiently. Nuth observes that the subroutine return embedded in the program itself rather than in special registers is attributable to von Neumann and Goldstein. Nuth furthermore states that the first interpretive routine may be said to be the universal Turing machine. Interpretive routines in the conventional sense were mentioned by John Mouchley in his lectures at the Moore School in 1946. Turing took part in this development also. Interpretive systems for the pilot ACE computer were written under his direction. Davis briefly mentions operating systems and compilers as outcomes of the notion of programmers' data. Some, however, might raise issues with this assessment. At the time a relatively small cadre of researchers were intimately involved with the architecture of the new digital computers. Hao Wang, a young researcher at this time, made the following observation. Turing's theory of computable functions antedated but has not much influenced the extensive actual construction of digital computers. These two aspects of theory and practice have been developed almost entirely independently of each other. 
The main reason is undoubtedly that logicians are interested in questions radically different from those with which the applied mathematicians and electrical engineers are primarily concerned. It cannot, however, fail to strike one is rather strange that often the same concepts are expressed by very different terms in the two developments. Wang hoped that his paper would connect the two approaches. Indeed, Minsky confirms this that the first formulation of Turing machine theory in computer-like models appears in Wang. Minsky goes on to demonstrate Turing equivalence of a counter-machine, with respect to the reduction of computers to simple Turing equivalent models. Minsky's designation of Wang as having made the first formulation is open to debate. While both Minsky's paper of 1961 and Wang's paper of 1957 are cited by Shepardson and Sturgis, they also cite and summarize in some detail the work of European mathematicians Kaffeinst, Urshiv, and Petter. The names of mathematicians Hermes and Kaffeinst appear in the bibliographies of both Shepardson, Sturgis, and L. Gott Robinson. Two other names of importance are Canadian researchers Melzack and Lambic. For much more see Turing machine equivalence, references can be found at Register Machine. Mathematical theory. With this encoding of action tables as strings it becomes possible in principle for Turing machines to answer questions about the behavior of other Turing machines. Most of these questions, however, are undecidable, meaning that the function in question cannot be calculated mechanically. For instance, the problem of determining whether an arbitrary Turing machine will halt on a particular input, or on all inputs, known as the halting problem, was shown to be, in general, undecidable in Turing's original paper. Rice's theorem shows that any non-trivial question about the output of a Turing machine is undecidable. A universal Turing machine can calculate any recursive function, decide any recursive language, and accept any recursively enumerable language. According to the Church-Turing thesis, the problems solvable by a universal Turing machine are exactly those problems solvable by an algorithm or an effective method of computation, for any reasonable definition of those terms. For these reasons, a universal Turing machine serves as a standard against which to compare computational systems and a system that can simulate a universal Turing machine is called Turing complete. An abstract version of the universal Turing machine is the universal function, a computable function which can be used to calculate any other computable function. The UTM theorem proves the existence of such a function. Efficiency. Without loss or generality, the input of Turing machine can be assumed to be in the alphabet 0. 1, any other finite alphabet can be encoded over 0, 1. The behavior of a Turing machine M is determined by its transition function. This function can be easily encoded as a string over the alphabet 0, 1, as well. The size of the alphabet of M, the number of tapes it has, and the size of the state space can be deduced from the transition functions table. The distinguished states and symbols can be identified by their position, e.g., the first two states can by convention be the start and stop states. Consequently, every Turing machine can be encoded as a string over the alphabet 0, 1. Additionally, we convene that every invalid encoding maps to a trivial Turing machine that immediately halts, and that every Turing machine can have an infinite number of encodings by padding the encoding with an arbitrary number of 1 s at the end. Just like comments work in a programming language, it should be no surprise that we can achieve this encoding given the existence of a Gödel number in computational equivalence between Turing machines and mu recursive functions. Similarly, our construction associates to every binary string alpha, a Turing machine M alpha, starting from the above encoding in 1966 F. C. Henny and R. E. Stearns showed that, given a Turing machine M-alpha that halts on input X within n steps, 
Then there exists a multi-tape universal Turing machine that halts on inputs alpha, x in C n log n, where C is a machine-specific constant that does not depend on the length of the input x but does depend on m's alphabet size, number of tapes, and number of states. Effectively this is a no-simulation. Smallest machines when Alan Turing came up with the idea of a universal machine he had in mind the simplest computing model powerful enough to calculate all possible functions that can be calculated. Claude Shannon first explicitly posed the question of finding the smallest possible universal Turing machine in 1956. He showed that two symbols were sufficient so long as enough states were used, and that it was always possible to exchange states by symbols. Marvin Minsky discovered a seven-state four-symbol universal Turing machine in 1962 using two tag systems. Other small universal Turing machines have since been found by Yuri Rogers Hin and others by extending this approach of tag system simulation. If we denote by the class of UTMs with M states and N symbols the following tuples have been found, and Rogerson's machine uses only 22 instructions, and no standard UTM of lesser descriptional complexity is known. However, generalizing the standard Turing machine model admits even smaller UTMs. One such generalization is to allow an infinitely repeated word on one or both sides of the Turing machine input, thus extending the definition of universality and known as semi-wick or wick universality, respectively. Small weakly universal Turing machines that simulate the rule 110 cellular automaton have been given for the and state symbol pairs. The proof of universality for Wolfram's two-state three-symbol Turing machine further extends the notion of weak universality by allowing certain non-periodic initial configurations. Other variants on the standard Turing machine model that yield small UTMs include machines with multiple tapes or tapes of multiple dimension, and machines coupled with a finite automaton, machines with no internal states. If you allow multiple heads on the Turing machine then you can have a Turing machine with no internal states at all. The states are encoded as part of the tape. For example, consider a tape with six colors. 0, 1, 2, 0, A, 1, A, 2, A. Consider a tape such as 0, 0, 1, 2, 2, A, 0, 2, 1 where a three-headed Turing machine is situated over the triple. The rules then convert any triple to another triple and move the three heads left or right. For example the rules might convert to and move the head left. Thus in this example the machine acts like a three-color Turing machine with internal states A and B. The case for a two-headed Turing machine is very similar. Thus a two-headed Turing machine can be universal with six colors. It is not known what the smallest number of colors needed for a multi-headed Turing machine are or if a two-color universal Turing machine is possible with multiple heads. It also means that rewrite rules are Turing complete since the triple rules are equivalent to rewrite rules. Extending the tape to two dimensions with a head sampling a letter and its eight neighbors, only two colors are needed, as for example, a color can be encoded in a vertical triple pattern such as 110, example of universal machine coding. For those who would undertake the challenge of designing a UTM exactly as Turing specifies see the article by Davies in Copeland. Davies corrects the errors in the original and shows what a sample run would look like. He claims to have successfully run a simulation. The following example is taken from Turing. For more about this example see the page Turing machine examples. Turing used seven symbols A, C, D, R, L, N to encode each five tuple, as described in the article Turing machine. His five tuples are only of types N1, N2, and N3. 
the number of each m configuration is represented by d followed by a unary string of a's, e.g. q3 equals d a a a. In a similar manner he encodes the symbols blank is d, the symbol 0, as dc, the symbol 1, as dcc, etc. The symbols r, l, and n remain as is. After encoding each five tuple is then assembled into a string in order as shown in the following table. Finally, the codes for all four five tuples are strung together into a code started by and separated by i.e. d a d d c r d a a d a a d d r d a a a d a a a d d c c r d a a a a d a a a a d d r d a this code he placed on alternate squares the f squares leaving the e squares empty the final assembly of the code on the tape for the U machine consists of placing two special symbols one after the other, then the code separated out on alternate squares, and lastly the double colon symbol, E, D A D D C R D A A D A A D D R D A A A D A A A D D C C R D A A A A D A A A A D D R D A. The U machine's action table is responsible for decoding the symbols. Turing's action table keeps track of its place with markers U, V, X, Y, Z by placing them in E squares to the right of the marked symbol. For example, to mark the current instruction Z is placed to the right of X is keeping the place with respect to the current M configuration DAA. The U machine's action table will shut all these symbols around as the computation progresses. E, D, A, D, D, C, R, D, A, A, Z, D, A, A, X, D, D, R, D, A, 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 D, A, 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 D, D, C, C, R, D, A, 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 D, A, 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 D, D, R, D, A. Turing's action table for his U machine is very involved. A number of other commentators provide examples of ways to encode instructions for the universal machine. As does Penrose, most commentators use only binary symbols i.e., only symbols 0, 1, or blank mark. Penrose goes further and writes out his entire U-machine code. He asserts that it truly is a U-machine code, an enormous number that spans almost two full pages of 1s and 0s. For readers interested in simpler encodings for the post-Turing machine the discussion of Davis in scene may be useful. Asperter and Rich O.T. described a multi-tape UTM defined by composing elementary machines with very simple semantics rather than explicitly giving its full action table. This approach was sufficiently modular to allow them to formally prove the correctness of the machine in the Matita proof assistant.